Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Support for this podcast comes from Frito-Lay in the 2023 Snack Bracket Championship. The Frito-Lay Snack Challenge is underway, and fans are voting on their favorite snacks to crown champion. We're talking about primetime matchups between the best 64 snacks in the land. Will Ruffles Ridges reign supreme? Can Doritos defend their dynasty? Or will Smart Food use their smarts for a surprise upset? Only you can decide. Get in on all the action for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. Let your snacks be heard. Just go to frito to vote and enter for a chance to win. No purchase necessary. Three stakes ends April 3rd, 2023. Void but prohibited. Years worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at frito Hello, friends. Welcome to Mavs Moneyball Group Therapy. Looks like we may have a smaller group tonight because everybody is tired after losses. Can't really say I blame you. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks just fell to the Golden State Warriors after being up 19. Um, if you did not see the game or don't entirely understand what happened, the short story is the Dallas Mavericks fell apart in the third quarter because they went away from every single thing that worked in the first half. They started isolating Kevon Looney, and it did not work. And then Jason Kidd decided to let them play it out which was strange. Um, and then as you know, and, and, and they played really bad defense because they weren't scoring and things kind of just went to hell from there. Um, the Warriors played really good in the second half. Kevon Looney scored a career high. Um, Mavericks got kind of embarrassed. It's a pretty frustrating loss. Um, I'm somehow not as floored as I usually am. Um, it, it, he, he was re, it's, it's just like like you know it's like one of those weird games where as I'm watching the first half I'm sitting there thinking like how doesn't Draymond get ejected for some of this stuff and then Draymond not getting ejected arguably kind of helped the Mavs at points <laughs> because when Draymond went to the bench is when like Looney started eating um and then you know you could just see the sort of uh the Mavericks started making like really basic miscues where the the Warriors offense and where they they stretch you um, kind of just broke the Mavericks. Like I haven't seen Maxi Kleba get beat off the dribble that repeatedly, that easily, um, in a really long time. Probably one of the worst Maxi Kleba games we've seen since his like horror, horrendous performance in March. Really, no other way around that. Um, then Luca got isolated a ton in the second, and I'm sorry, in the third and the fourth quarter. The like Curry was hunting him and scored on him a lot, and. I mean, you say, what do you do about this other than, like, play better defense? But also, I, I sort of hang this one off. Um, I sort of hang this one on Jason Kidd. I'm going to be interested to see what you guys think. I did not like any of his postgame commentary. He started the fourth quarter with five timeouts, and it's like, what? You know, I get where he's coming from. You want to let guys play through stuff. But now is not the time to let guys figure things out when the Warriors went on an extended 51-25 to 25 run. Like that, that's the thing where it's just, you can't have that sort of thing happen. And he's saying, well, I can't do it all for them. That's true. But what you can do is you can, you can draw up a out of timeout play, which the Mavericks are very good at, or you could say, Hey guys, what is happening to where Kevon Looney is getting easy dump off passes? How can we clean this up? Let's stop this. Instead, they just like, let them play through it. It was really, really confusing. Um, I'm really glad, and I mean this sincerely, because um, I think there's a few words. 
I'm really glad this game didn't come down to how the refs had no control of the game in the first half. Um, there were some weird, stupid calls and just like a lot of arguing and bickering. And the Mavs bench is absolutely going to get fined again. Um, Reggie Miller decided to make that a narrative point, but maybe it is what it is. Okay, you guys are done, uh, probably done hearing me talk. So let's get through to some people. Uh, just listen for your name and let's fly through some stuff because who wants to be here all night? Um, coming up first, Armand. Hey, Kirk. Hello. Well, I definitely agree with you. I think um, this is on Jason Kidd the most. It was just so many things that you could point out. It was just like, why? Like, first off, like, I thought it was pretty clear that Josh Green should not be playing in the playoffs anymore. And, yeah, you still, he only played five minutes, but those five minutes were not great. You know, he had – Franks um, were significantly worse if you look at plus minus. Um, that is true. But, I mean, he's been – he has been better. And, obviously, you know, for defensive purposes too because, you know – Skill wise, I they're about on each other's level, I would say. But Frank Nilakina, like you know, he's more confident. Like you can tell how nervous Josh can gets, and it's fine. You know, he's young. He's gonna develop. I'm not too worried about him. He just shouldn't be playing in the playoffs right now. Um, another point I want to make is Spencer Dinwiddie. He only shot six times, but come on, man, you're supposed to be the third leading scorer on this team, and you only got four points. And it's just I, I don't know why, but I I just get pissed off whenever he has the ball, just because of how long he takes with he whatever he's, yeah, he's a ball. Like, he's, he's such a bizarre ball stopper at times where there were two points tonight. And I remember where he was in the corner. It was third or fourth quarter uh, where he's, he gets the ball in the left wing uh-huh. either through a, a ball reversal. And at one point he had an open lane. Actually, uh-huh. both times he had open lanes, and one time he held it and waited for the defense to come to him. The other time he just passed it to someone in the corner who was covered. And it's like you, you got to have some better instincts, friend. No, he, like he was he's real bad. It's it's just it's it's been annoying, and especially like you'll see like whenever whenever Luke is out of the game, you know, obviously JB's going to be the guy with the ball, and you know he's doing his thing, he's getting buckets. Next possession, you just have Dinwiddie holding onto the ball. Like, come on, man, like. And the worst part is that, like, he's shown that he can be good whenever he's playing off the ball. Like, he's had he's won us two games at the buzzer by playing off ball and just being a catch and shoot player. Like, I just I I don't know what's the deal with him. I think I think we Dinwiddie deserves a little bit more slander just because of you know he he was he was good he was good game six game seven for us. But it's just like there's so many like low IQ plays that you can just point out with him, and it's just well, like the yeah, offensive I'm, foul. Like the offensive foul that he got that was nearly like called a flagrant. Uh huh. Like that was terrible. It's just I, And I he don't... was arguing it. And I'm just like, what do you like what do you mean? You elbowed the dude in the face on the way up. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what's the deal. Um Reggie played a good game. Brunson played a good game. Luca had a like that's crazy that someone besides Luca and Brunson had twenty plus points and we still lost. You know? But I, I, I don't know what you do about Kevon Looney. Like, that's that's the one thing I'm worried about. What a we sentence. don't have anyone to throw at him. What a sentence. I don't know what we do about Kevon Looney. Exactly. Like, I don't – because, okay, Aiden a- a- played decent, but and we didn't have to worry about Rudy Gobert. But why is it, why is it Kevon Looney that, that's killing us? Well, did you see the, the – uh, I, I don't know if we talked about this the other night. Maybe we talked about it too late. But there was an incredible play that led Reddit following game one where Luca isos him and Looney's simply too slow to bite on any of Luca's fakes and stuffs him after like the third fake. And then it led to a Steph Curry three. And it's like, why are we like our two best players, meaning Brunson and Luca, sort of thrive on herky jerky stuff, herky jerky actions, you know, strength too, but they're not finesse they're not speed and so instead we're attacking a guy and like looney might only be six nine his wingspan is seven four i look i i I asked somebody in a warrior's twitter like what no like stop attacking the seven foot four wingspan guy looney he's having a great series i'm gonna give him all the props absolutely but he should not be this good (laughs) <laughs> like, like I'm not trying to slander him. He's a good player. I believe he played all 82 games. Props to him for that. He's a hardworking player, but he should not be this good. Um, hey, Curry, hey. there's nothing you can do about. I mean, pool. There's right. only so much you can do. Like, 
I just don't get it. Man, I'm making another drink. This fucking sucks. Yeah, no, it, 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 it was a tough night. But Maxi, um, bad game. I'm not too worried about it. I think he'll bounce back. Um, it's just like I like I just don't know if we have what it takes to make an adjustment to turn this year's around. Like I and I did say the same thing with Phoenix, but this is this is the Golden State Warriors. They've been in this situation before. They are they've won three rings in the last ten years. So right, incredible basketball team, incredible resilience. It's just just uh, the, the the only thing I can hope for is that we make this a series. I I, I at least get one at home because I'm not like because it it is the Warriors. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank you for starting us off, Armand. Appreciate right, thank you. It, 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 right. Tyler, you're correct. It is vodka clock. Um, Tyler, I'm going to need you to come up here in a little bit and tell me you tweeted Josh something about like what the score was and when was going on. Um, okay, I got a couple. I got one guy I want to get to because I know he probably wants to go to bed because he's up late on the a couple guys in the East Coast. Iwan, what's up, my friend? Hey, Kirk, what's going on? Uh, making a little vodka tonic. Yeah, man, this this is this is horrible. This is I, I I've been a very optimistic person, you know, with the Mavs this postseason. But this game, I'm 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 really fed up in the third quarter. And you know, a uh, people, few people in the Mavs community posted like said Dwight Howard literally gets paid. I mean, not Dwight Howard, Dwight Powell literally gets paid millions of dollars to wear a suit off a bus every day. It's like the the confidence he wears in his suit. When he when you see him pregame walking through the tunnel, you would think that that would come on to the court, and it's like, bro, just just stop wearing the suits, man. Just change it up a little bit. Change it up a little bit. But in regards to the game itself, it's like we we it's like we have the formula. What we was doing in the first half, executing was good, and just like I see you posted on Twitter. In regards to Rick Carlisle and Jason Kidd, you know, Rick Carlisle used to call timeouts too quick, and then Jason Kidd was too late. Something else I did realize is um, what Rick Carlisle used to do, he would hold Luca out when teams are making a long and important run. And in this game where you need that leader back in, I know Luca played the third quarter, the whole third quarter, but He's young. He had the TV timeout, you know, the beginning of the fourth quarter. Oh, Get did you in. see how gassed he looked, though? How he was, he was toast. Okay. This, this guy is, you know, we, we don't know what illness he was battling and I'm really glad that didn't become a thing, but like, we're basically running into the guy playing, you know, this is what game of the year is this? They play 82 regular season games of which he played like, I don't know, like 60 something like they're, I, I'm not going to crack the guy for being tired now though. Any of these guys they you know, they played a ton of, you know, they, they already played 13 playoff games for this series started. This is the 15th playoff game. So it's like, there's elements of this where I'm like, I don't know. I guess this is why I'm not super upset because if you get beat by the better team, are you more mad in in that they lost or how they lost? I'm mad because of how they lost, not that they lost. Does that make sense? Yeah, I kind of agree with you on that in in regards to how they lost. And um, it's like we have Brunson. This, this was like the perfect like Brunson. And Look Luka at my game. guy like, hitting three both... pointers, Jalen Brunson. Right. Yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a perfect game. One two. You know they're doing anything, and this is like something that I give you a little bit of you know optimism and you know hope. That we you know, we signed Brunson that he can do that you know what I'm saying from seeing this kind of game is like they can be a nice one two punch but it's like the rest of the team our bench we literally like only six seven players deep not even seven six and it's like if Maxi is not really giving us anything on the offensive end and he's like you said he's having a a, a layup a, 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 a layup line to the layup you might as well if anything play Bertans more. He's playing with more fire. He's playing with more passion. What 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 are you gonna lose in in in, in doing that? You know. So uh, let's let's see here. Just because I'm a petty shit, Dwight Powell and Maxi Kleba combined for 41 minutes and got three rebounds. Congratulations to them. Three rebounds. Three rebounds. And it's like, you know, it's been our pressing thing for years. For the last four or five years, it's like. We need a center. We need a center. You can't – the usage rate that Luca have in having to do so much deal with all those bodies hitting him with picks, and they got to be our leading rebounder. They got to be our leading scorer. It's, it's taking a toll. Like, 
Dwight Powell and Maxi cannot have three rebounds combined. It, it, that is, yeah. oh my God, it's just, that's that that's the part that hurts me. Like, you know, I mean, it would be great if we make it to the finals and then you don't want to make it to the finals and at the same time, the management may think like, hey, you know, we made it here, we're good. So, you know, but at the same time, it's like, we got to get something. We gotta get oh, something. Hold on, yeah. I, I have to address this. Armand, you did not just call for the signing of Ibaka. <laughs> I, I was there when Dirk Nowitzki took his soul. Okay, oh, it was about God. 11 years ago around this time. One of one of Ibaka's kids has to be named Dirk. I'm pretty sure Jeff Van Gundy said that on air. Um, I'm just teasing you, man. Uh, I, I I know you're asking for a veteran. You're not asking. Yeah, that's what you mean. Anyway. No, I mean yeah. And lastly, um, yeah, Jeff Van Gundy did say that in that game in 2011. <laughs> If I'm Serge Ibaka, I name yeah. my first son Dirk. <laughs> I think that was, game, that was probably game one when he had um 48 points. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, the last thing, Reggie Miller is like, it, it pains me to listen He's to him. He's a war criminal. Me. I want him uh, sent to the Hague, fucking moron. It's like, as blatant as you can want Golden State to win, it's like you're commentating there's nothing about what the Dallas Mavericks have done good is what Golden State is not doing. And, oh, my God, Golden State, you know, make a three-year Steph. You have to, it's like, it was terrible. Yeah, it's, it hurts. It hurts. It, it made me long for my man Derek Harper at this juncture. <laughs> it's really difficult to do. It's Derek really Harper difficult was, to do. Derek Harper was um, as a former player. But, um, yeah, um, hopefully we get a good, you know, good, good show in game three. A good 48 minutes but um right thank you man well, th- yeah man we'll talk soon appreciate you yes, sir. i know like like the just just the harps the harpisms like i can't we're at the point in the playoffs where i haven't heard them so long so i miss them because like when harp would say as a player the first thing i would think of where i'm like what else would you be like as a dentist what you're supposed to do is hedge in the pick and roll like as a plumber like what like i never understood that Anyways, okay, I got to go to my guy, uh, Jason Gallagher, who is coming to defend his favorite player, Maxi Kleba. What's up, dude? As a, uh, you know, as a video producer, I've got a lot to uh, add to this conversation. It, but before you start, yeah. the other night when I was tweeting about people who are joining the green room, my favorite thing that you did was not <laughs> recog- – you didn't recognize yourself in the hat. That's the funniest thing to me. I only, I only, uh, I only bought the hat for a trip, and I never wore it again. So I never- I'm not a cowboy. I'm just a guy who watches his team uh, lose miserably. Um, yeah, you so, know. Hey, hey. In all seriousness, the thing I wanted to say about Maxi, it was like the you know me, Kirk. You know our private chats. I'm always kind of giving Maxi hell. And uh, public chats. You have been on shows. I've, there's video of you. I remember. <laughs> there's some right? good stuff out there. Look, look. It's no secret that Dallas like absolutely needs a better you know, center. Like, I, I don't think that's any secret to anybody. It's a huge reason why Memphis saw some success against the Warriors. Um, but honestly, Maxi was on a fucking island in the paint, like on an island. And I just think as you watch your guys get blown by and he then has to help, yeah. it's A, he's going to get blown by. B, that's what's going to lead to offensive rebounds, which obviously sucks. Yep. And so there was a p- small part of me that actually felt bad for him. Okay, end Maxi compliments here. Um, that was that was truly terrible, and I'm excited to watch Dallas with a proper center at some point. Um, could, could you could you share with the chat what you texted me? Because I think it's one of the funniest things I've I've gotten tonight. Like, oh. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> folks, I'll, I'll be at game three and four, which, by the way, they're undefeated when I'm in. Uh, but I'll be at games three and four, partially to see my favorite team. But honestly, it's mostly to just avoid Reggie Miller's voice at all costs. <laughs> I think mean, I mean, to avoid that man's voice. Oh, my God. Um, in all seriousness, I do want to say I do want to say a, another thing. It's really, really like this was a this was a tough loss, mostly because like the other playoff losses just felt like, yep, we didn't have it. Shots weren't going in, you know, next game. Uh, this one really felt like, what the fuck just happened? And it really felt like, damn, Golden State is just fucking better. That's what it felt like. Um, better m- mentally, better with their schemes, everything. Like, they were creative, off-the-dribble shit. They just look so much better. 
And I know that there is a contingent of casual NBA fan that's like, well, you know, Memphis took them a certain amount of games and we'll likely do the same. I have faith. But uh, if you watch those Memphis games too, like – Golden State did some very uncharacteristic things, and it was almost as if they were fucking with Memphis a little bit. Um, There were, like, whole possessions where Klay Thompson was like, iso ball, baby. Like, it was just, like, really uncharacteristic Warriors basketball. And in these two, these last two games have felt like pure Warriors, like, unselfish, cutting, like, unbelievable basketball that, in the end, it sucks because our team played, you know, well enough on offense minus uh, an entire quarter there. But, you know, um, it, it, it's, it sucks when you just lose to that good of a team. But at the end of the day, you're just kind of like, well, that's what happened. Yeah. No, I, 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 I concur. Like it's, <sighs> it's, it's the house money situation where yeah. I'm really glad to be here. I mean, I've told, I'm just going to keep telling this story. Even though everybody's heard it. Like, I agreed to get a dog after the Mavericks <laughs> lost game to, to a, a second dog, a, a yeah. razor sharp teeth puppy, like just because I didn't think the Mavs would win. So like that, they're here. I'm not ready to count them out. You know, yeah. Luca, there were a lot of positives. Luca yeah. showed that, that, you know, believe it or not, Andrew fucking Wiggins is not a Luca stopper who could have guessed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, more than anything, it's no, just he did that. play. He did play him well. I got to give the guys yeah, some yeah, respect. Yeah. But more than anything, I mean, I do think about like big picture NBA stuff and how like just just how like it just seems like Golden State is just so much tougher than Phoenix. I know it's two games yeah. in. I know we were probably saying the same thing after the 0-2 start against Phoenix before, but it just seems that way. Um, that's just like my my general take. And then and then honestly, last time er, nobody makes me question what is what when it comes to officiating more than the Warriors, more than Draymond Green specifically. Like mm. I, I, I genuinely can't tell what is what. Now, if it were up to me, no taunting, no talking to the refs, no nothing would be a technical, but it apparently is in a lot of situations except for when it comes to the Warriors, which is just, I don't Oh, understand if Luca had done anything, if Luca had done anything like what Draymond Green had been tonight, he would have been ejected by halftime. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. I don't understand. And like, what? Like, I've seen taunting penalties when a guy dunks and kind of looks at a guy the wrong way. You know yes. what I mean? But seven, okay, I mean, literally- well, it's it's a Kane Fitzgerald crew. Like, I've been talking, I've been exchanging yeah. text messages with like Sam Fendiari, who you know, Warriors Light Years guy. You you know, you were on the show the other day. Like, Kane Fitzgerald is a terrible referee when it comes to control. Now, I am glad it didn't cost the game because the fact that we, uh, you know, I don't, like, there was no refs talk to be had here. Like, it was just, they did some stupid stuff that was, like, made the game weird, but it did not affect the the game. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, it, it was it was just bizarre to watch. It was bizarre to watch that double technical. That obviously had no impact on the game, but I'm just trying to, you know, make it a little lighthearted in here for a second and just say that Draymond Green could literally, like, pull a fucking knife on the ref and they'd be like, Oh, let's see what he does. You know, it's like, what in the world? This guy can do whatever the fuck he wants. It's kind of crazy. Yes. It's, it's well, and more power to him to a degree, because it's like, if you're going to press like that, like he he was (laughs) our mutual friend, uh, Jason Concepcion tweeted during the game. (laughs) If Draymond Green bit a Maverick, would that be enough to get him ejected from the game? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Holden Accountable asked the question, why does it bother people that Draymond yells so much? I don't – it doesn't bother I don't care because Luka does the same shit. All. It's just no. when you watch when you watch a double technical get assessed with two guys that had like a pretty nor- – like, not normal, but, you know, like they were just kind of moving, living their lives, and they got assessed technicals. And you watch Luca say words to a referee, he gets a ton of technicals, but you see Draymond – screaming bloody murder at the referee and by the way he's not he's he's not, he's not covering his mouth we can read his lips they're not yes <laughs> they're not the nicest words i've ever heard and then you see dorian Vinny smith and you're just like god would, did dorian threaten his kids like what did he say to <laughs> you know like, like <laughs> that's all so i don't think yeah it's it's just, I, I thought it was great it was great theater going on it was it was great theater. The funniest was uh, that like like why are we having a confrontation between uh, Davis Bertans and um, <laughs> Lee? 
Like, the, like the, there's a picture, there's a screenshot of Davis smiling, looking like an angry Karen. It was yeah. killing me. Anyways, yes. thanks for hanging out, buddy. You're the best. Hey, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Um, God bless you. You're doing the Lord's work after this. Oh, we have a good time in here. We have a good time See in here. All. all right, be good. All right, coming up next, um, and remember, I do try to get to literally everybody that's in here, so I promise I will, I will, I have nothing to do, that's not true, I have a child's baseball game and parenting and shit to do tomorrow, but I can do that tired, who cares? Drew, I'm sure you want to go to bed, because you're on the East Coast, what's up? Hey, Kirk. What's happening, my friend? Well, hey, I got a perfect answer for uh, uh, Kevon Looney, I, I don't know if we could do it, but the perfect answer is stop dribble penetration. That's you, it. So so play I mean, better defense is what I'm hearing. <laughs> well, just stop dribble penetration. That that's he got everything up dribble penetration, you know, Maxi or, or Dwight has to come out and guard, drop it off to Looney. Or they throw the butt they 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 take it to the hole, throw the butt the, the ball up over over Maxi and uh uh or Dwight and there's nobody there but Looney for the offensive rebound. That's mm. it. it. Dribble penetration created everything for Kevon Looney tonight, and they could not stop dribble penetration to save Well, do life. you know what they started doing in the third? They started blitzing Curry again. They had actually done a pretty good job. You have to Didn't live he? with yeah. Steph Curry getting good shots because he is a multi-MVP winning basketball player. You're not going to shut him out of the game. But he blitzed. They threw the, the. It was just like a breakdown of basic principles, and I don't understand why they continue you're, to do to do no, that. No, yeah, you're playing, and you're playing into Golden State's hands when you yes. when, you, when you do that. You know, you know, that 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 yeah. And and Stan McGundy said in the third quarter is, is why are they doing a pick and roll with Kevon Looney? They, they did the pick and roll with you know with uh, Steph Curry the whole first half, and it worked like great. And then all of a sudden, third quarter, they went to do a pick and roll with with Kevon Looney. What yeah. That that wasn't working out too well, you know. But uh, the one thing I one thing I'll tell you about Draymond Green, they're not going to throw Draymond Green out because of 2018, because the NBA has gotten so much crap. Over I don't the, want him to and, throw. You know, you, and I, I don't want you know, him thrown out either, for what it's worth. Like, I well, don't the want thing that is, either. the thing, some of the things he's doing, maybe he should get that technical because the NBA, even now, everybody says they totally fucked up that. Suspended for that game. The, uh, yeah. Even Stephen A. calls it the uh, the NBA stimulus package that gave Cleveland the championship. And I just think that that they got the thing now is they ain't throwing out Draymond because of the NBA. It, it was a black eye in the NBA, and there's still people talking about that, you know. And and I and yeah. I think that, yeah, the the refs you know kind of know about that. We don't want to we don't want to be go down history as costing the series like like. 2018 was, you know, kind of thing. Yep. So I think no. I think that's why it gets in the way of a lot of shit, you know, because now they'll call that first technical on him for almost nothing, but that second technical, they they don't, they don't want to put him out of the game. That's that's what that's all about. I don't, I don't want anybody out of the game. That's why it's just like it's a no. problem when we're all kind of like, and I think there's a few Warriors fans in the chat that are like, yes, we all agree, Kane Fitzgerald yeah. is the problem. <laughs> yeah, and and the thing about it is, is Draymond is Draymond. You know, I mean, uh, you know, uh, there's some college teams that used to do that. Good, that Forty minutes of hell, do forty, mm-hmm. basically just just foul on every play. They can't call every one. You know, it's the right. same thing with Draymond. I mean, you can call t- technical on Draymond every play, but since it it happens with so much regularity you get i i don't know if you get immune to it or you just get used to it but you know if you, you just know it's going to happen with him and so maybe you're just more you know yeah for sure uh, yeah do more to it but that but that's all right but literally all that i saw i mean everything offensively was fine the team played fine but dribble penetration they just crushed them all night long with dribble penetration and that's why looney did so good he either got offensive rebounds or he got the ball dropped off to him when our, you know max ears white had to come out and 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 play help on the dribble penetration that's it you know simple yeah. basketball yeah. yeah thanks for all right. so, you got it mm-hmm. yeah. all right i'm gonna bring up uh, a couple of new folks next um mr moses you're chatting what's happening tell us what you're thinking Mr. Kirk, this is a true pleasure. I'm a first time, long time. Well, and howdy friends in the chat. Yeah. And thank you very much. So I, Quick three points. I'm going to fire through here. First point, it was sad to see our precious Mavs roll over and die. Second point, <laughs> at, half, 
At halftime, Jason Kidd must have first passed out orange slices and then railed some ketamine because he seemed to disassociate from his duties in the second half. Third, I'd wager the majority of Warrior fans have never heard of Andres Biedrins because they started rooting for the team in 2017. And I would double down on that wager that when they return home, they plug themselves back into their matrix pods. There are two completely different types of Warriors fans. We have to address this. There are Warriors fans who live in the Bay Area and have been longtime crazy suffering fans that are absolutely excellent to talk basketball with. And then there are motherfuckers who live online and refuse to shut up. And I, I, I you can tell who's who right away. I'll be clear there. Um, but yeah, anyhow. That's, you're killing that ketamine line. I'm going to be thinking about that for the next two days. <laughs> well, 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 you're the man, Kirk, so I appreciate you. Appreciate all my fellow Mavs fans. Check you later. All right. Talk soon, buddy. Hope you come back. Um, man, we got a lot of good good folks in the chat. I'm going to bring on people first. Troy, long time, maybe first time. Hit the unmute button for us if you're able. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? I can. Welcome, welcome. All right. Well, Kirk, I have tickets to Sunday's game, and I made the mistake of going to uh, the AAC watch party tonight, and I'm driving home in just disarray. How was so, how was that? Oh, it was amazing until the third quarter when we just crapped our pants and uh, scored, what, 13 points? I don't know. Yeah, it was bad. Um, it was real bad. But... You know, I don't think it's the end of the world. We've been here before, but, you know, against an amazing team in the Suns. But at the same time, like, Jordan Poole is what we want Spencer Dinwiddie to be, and he's just not. Jordan Poole's consistent, and he creates, and he just – he does so much for that team off the bench, and Dinwiddie is – he's – shooting and he's hitting or he's not and i think that one of the things that we that we see here is that we you know we we we're playing with house money right we're in the yep. conference finals nobody expected it but we wanted to see what we needed to do to get better and it's it's inside it's 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 down low it's it's being scrappy not even a big guy but somebody that like Looney, somebody that can be scrappy and get rebounds and play hard and do the dirty work, and we just don't have that. And it's it's hard to watch sometimes. Like in the fourth so, quarter, when we finally started scoring again, we just we couldn't play defense. And it was I remember so hard to watch. I remember where I was. Normally in Dallas, I drive my wife rides passenger. But I was going somewhere. I had to get on a plane. So she was driving me. We were running errands around the city. And then she was driving me to Love Field. And I remember sitting in the passenger seat, freaking out over Twitter because the Mavericks had six centers, all of whom I hated. And it's so funny now because we we ended up cutting two of them, Willie Cauley-Stein and the guy who ended up on Cleveland, uh, Moses uh, Brown. Um they signed a seventh one uh, due to COVID related stuff. Bigs are not, bigs are the last kind of market, you know, inefficiency where if you can't find a big, you don't really have a great feel for things. So it's like right now at 26, where the Mavericks are drafting this year, I think a lot of people believe they're going to select a big guy. I've not really did, dove into this yet, but there's some, you know, potential big, you know, if the Mavericks were worse, like this guy out of Duke, Mark Williams is who I lust after. Um, anyways, that's neither here nor there, but it's like, it's just crazy to me that the Mavericks had this many guys in the roster at one point and they, they had to go down to one and a half. I mean, Dwight Powell's played, like he played eight minutes tonight, like eight kind of, you know, he, he got some great cardio in good for him. I hope he got his steps in. He feels good about it before he goes to bed. And then Powell played 33 and it's like, what is that? How do we get to this point? And how do we make the Western conference finals? It's like, <laughs> that's kind of where my head is. Yeah. No, I agree. And I think I hope kid learns from Kerr, like just the off ball movement, because there were so many times where Luca would break down the defense and it's swing. Oh, Tyler, how you doing, buddy? 
Oh, man. I am good and pissed off. Yeah? Well, you know it's a big deal when I actually wrote things down I wanted to talk about. Organized me is very pissed off, so I can't wait. Well, what are we thinking? Tell me, tell me what you got, because you you were you, let, let's just like let's just let's roll through it. Well, did you want that stat that I tweeted uh, to Josh? Yes. So with uh, six minutes and fifty seconds left in the third quarter, the Mavs were up by fifteen points, and they somehow managed to lose without having a single second of clutch time. Hmm. Hmm. That's impressive. It's on I didn't think it was possible. So that's a like let me just do some math here. That is a 24 point turnaround in 19 minutes. Well, and it, like they were down by like 9 or 10 with 5 minutes left. They lost it by like 30. Yeah. It's incredible. Hey, but hey, kid had five timeouts to start the fourth. That's what's important here. Yeah, I'm wondering if we get to carry him over to next game, you know. I have or to next we season get to carry maybe. Right. Maybe it's like vacation days at your job where you can just hopefully roll some over and you accumulate enough timeouts over the course of time. I don't know. Maybe just a misunderstanding of the contract. I mean, <clears throat> timeouts are a use it or lose it situation. <laughs> He's usually pretty good about that because lots of people get pissy when he calls a timeout with like three three minutes and like 10 seconds left in the quarter. And he usually does that because he's burning the timeout that he's going to lose. Yeah, of all people, he should know that timeouts don't carry over because he takes one at 310 every game. But anyhow, um, if I told you that we shot 21 of 45 from three, Luca, Brunson, and Bullock combined for 94 points, Draymond fouls out, Clay Thompson's irrelevant, you're up 17 in the third quarter, and you're up 14 at halftime, and I looked. Teams are 192 and 33 before tonight on the road in the last 14 seasons when being up by 14 at halftime. Yeah. And you lost without going to even clutch time. It's honestly impressive. Yep. I'm, I'm thanks. I feel really good now. This is good. That's the this thing. Is healthy. Like, I am not angry. Here's the thing. <laughs> like I am, I am going to drink so much before the game Sunday because I can't put up with another one of these. <laughs> See, I always have to kind of like couch it because during pandemic, when I, you know, everybody, for everybody that doesn't know, I took over Maz Moneyball March 1st, 2020. Tell me what happened two weeks later. Um, I became, I don't want to say I was a functioning alcoholic, but I might have been a functioning alcoholic during the pandemic. And I just don't drink near as much anymore. But I like this is causing me to do it because, like, on the one hand, I'm really happy. On the other hand, I'm like, I'm a constant stress ball and like my dogs can feel it. And I'm, I, I'm like doing breathing exercises in the game. It's pathetic. Yeah. Like everybody's saying we're playing with house money, which a hundred percent. I still don't want to fucking lose, but you're up by 19 and you're up by 15 with 18 (laughs) minutes left in the game and you lose by 10. It's good. It's good. It's great. I love it. It feels good. It's impossible to lose that game. Oh, it's, well, it, it's so we, frustrating. We could be that. There's this salty fucker from Sun's Twitter, this like 23 year old looking dude that like appears to, to, you know, he looks like Jesse from Breaking Bad, who's like angrily making fun of Mavs fans. And it has been for like two weeks. And like his tweets make me feel better about things because we're still playing and he's not. Oh, yeah. <sighs> I love to see the salty Suns fans. I'll, I'll give them some. They. See, I just, I'm just glad we're here. Just glad yeah, that's that right. Here. That's right. Now, now, I'm a, now, go make another drink, Tyler. Thanks for hanging out. Absolutely, make it a double, my friend. <laughs> Bye. All right, coming up next is my very good friend, Samus Vindiari, who is a part, uh, who runs the Light Years podcast with his buddy Andy Lou. If you don't go listen to it, you maybe should because they're crazy in the best way. Sam, what's up? Oh, you know, it's uh, I'm just I'm just coming here to say hi. That's all. I know. Yeah, but did you <laughs> expect this? Like we're kind of like this is why I do these because it's much more productive to do this than it is to be on Twitter. No, actually, I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. When the Mavs went up 19 in the first half, I'm like, oh yeah, that's what I expected. I'm thinking a split. Now Warriors gotta get a split in Dallas, and we'll see what happens after a two-two sure. series. So to, for me, 
to see the Warriors win after, and let's be honest, Draymond was disgustingly bad. Um, it, it very surprising. Like, I, it's very hard for me to imagine the Warriors being good with Draymond playing that poorly like six weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, the, the Draymond thing, unless he's guarding Luke, like, like Brunson's a, I don't think Brunson's a bad matchup for him. But, like, the plan to play him on Brunson seems to sort of bank on the fact that Brunson's not going to hit threes. And he hit threes. Now, granted, the Warriors won anyway. But the, I'm not sure. I, I, it's, it sounds stupid to say, like, oh, this isn't going to be the series for the, the, the first ballot Hall of Famer, former defensive player of the year guy. But it's just, like, he's – unless he's guarding Luka – like, this, this the was kind of is- more – Go ahead. The thing is, I thought he played an excellent game, game one. Um, I, I thought, like, he did kind of the quintessential Draymond Green free safety. Yeah. He's guarding everyone and no one at the same time, but, like, you, you kind of have to acknowledge he's playing good Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the script um, to start the third quarter basically blew the game open in game one. Yeah, and, like, obviously the highlight block on Dinwiddie, you know, calling it out, getting there from the corner, like, that's, like, kind of – what he's made his name on being like that, like, you know, kind of intellectual, just kind of going through, but like tonight he was awful. There's no other way around it. Um, I thought it was actually a good adjustment. I thought um, the Mavs did a good job um, kind of taking the ball out of Brunson's hands a little bit. Like I thought like game one, there was way too much uh, Jalen Brunson dribbling the ball. Oh yeah. Um Yes. Uh, I, I can see where you're coming from with your, like, he's good, but he's not that good criticism. Um, well, it's it's a choice thing because one of the things that he he's refused to do all year is take those threes that the Warriors gave him. He will just right. dribble in because he wants to take the long 19-footer. And he he had a long 19-footer right before the end of the half that, that gave the, like, it was a terrible shot that had a long rebound that allowed the Warriors to go score. Uh, that made the game 58 to 69 before Luca hit that three. And it's like, that's the quintessential Brunson play that makes me a crazy person. But then he takes this catch and shoot stuff, or he realizes he, he gets a, um, like there's miscommunication on defense and he's able to take an open three. He has not done that regularly all season. He'll have these games where he has multiple shots, but it's, he's had, uh, he has 22 threes all postseason and he has five tonight that's that's <laughs> kind of where it's been isn't that crazy that is crazy um i you know what like if i'm looking at this game objectively like i'm i don't feel bad about anything dallas did in offense i actually think they had a that they, like they should have won the game i'm walking away from it going how did they let the game get away from themselves defense oh because they started right? isolating looney like there was the like Kid, kid needs to take some responsibility for this. And I'm questioning, I'm really curious if Luca like wanted to do it too. But they started isolating Looney. And why? It, it, they had been getting so many good looks. And, Looney's and, the ultimate bait and switch. Like you think, <laughs> you think he's worse than he is. And next thing you know, you're like, God damn it. I just went three for eight. What was that? You know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, but you're you're bringing along some of your fun people. Like we have Jordan Poole with the hashtag "Who's gonna guard Luca?" I mean, my man had a bajillion points. Like that was kind of what everybody expected him to do. I will yeah. say that I, I mentioned this before you hopped in here. Like I think Andrew Wiggins is doing as good a job as a person can do on Luca. Zach Lowe pointed this out in the podcast today, where one of the things that he does really, really well on Luca is when he screened, he gets over the screen really quickly because he's fast. And that's that's something that Mikhail Bridges was not able to do. Um, anyway, I don't under, like, I could kill. I was so frustrated with Coach Kidd on this one. This was just like, and his postgame comments where he's like, well, you know, you can't call a timeout to fix everything. And then the Warriors had a 51 to 25 run where he called a single timeout. So cool, cool story. Yeah, if I was if I was looking from the Dallas perspective, like I actually I, I stand by this. I don't I don't have any criticisms of Dallas's offense. I think Luca was I mean Luca was general, fried chicken in the fourth quarter. He was, yeah. The the question is what they do defensively because 
Luca was offensively in one of those modes where he's like, I'm going to get my team back into this game by myself. But all that ended up happening was trading buckets. And yeah. and it's just like, you know, if the war is already up at that point and you're trading buckets, like, well, then you're, you're not doing anything. So my question for you is what do you think Dallas should do defensively to change it? Because it was way too easy for the worst tonight. This is a fun one because I think some of it becomes like, um, I use this analogy a lot, but I don't care. And, and um, remember the Titans, the coach, Boone basically says I run the I run the veer offense. So it has right. six plays and like Novocaine over time you just give it enough time. And that's kind of what the Warriors motion offense is designed to do. Where you give it enough time and someone's gonna make a mistake. Like do you remember the Clay Thompson dunk um that came from it was like fourth quarter, maybe like it put the game it kind of effectively put the game out of reach, like ten point lead type thing. Um I, 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 Dorian Finney Smith got hung up on the screen and someone was supposed to hedge and bump clay and somebody didn't, somebody made a mistake. And that's essentially what the motion motion is, is daring someone to do. And over time, the Mavs just don't have the bodies. I mean, we haven't talked about this too much in here, but Frank Milikina played minutes. Oh no. And Josh green, former university of Arizona. Uh, yeah. That, those were, those minutes. weren't good for you guys. Those were tremendous. And it's just like the, the Mavericks don't have any other options. They don't have anybody else. Like you're playing Davis Berton seven minutes and he didn't kill them. And that's incredible. I don't know. He might, he might have won you some minutes there. The, 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 he did. The, I, I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave on, I'm going to leave on this one, but the, the Bertrand's Damian Lee moments were an objective win for the Mavericks. That was hilarious. Well, I do think the Mavs bench <laughs> is going to get fined again because um, Super Cop Reggie Miller wanted to uh, to make that a real point of emphasis. He's like, "There's it's dangerous over there." Ugh. God, Reggie Miller, what are you going to do? Well, nice. thanks for joining, buddy. No, oh, he just leaves. I'm, I'll talk. To, I'll text. I'll text him later. Matt Phillips, what's happening, my friend? Uh, not a lot. Uh, this is a pretty damn demoralizing game. Was but, it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, no. So I have a pretty hard zag. So everyone is taking this game as a proof that we need a big man and yada, yada, yada. And not that our big men weren't, weren't terrible, but Kavon Looney is not that good, guys. Like, we've played two good big – if anything, this shows that big men aren't that important because we've played Rudy Gobert and, and DeAndre Ayton and been absolutely fine dealing with both of them. Kevon Looney averaged 2.4 points in the first round against Denver. He averaged, I think, five last round. Like, he's not good. What it is but, – go ahead. But, but okay, not good players don't do what he's done to Dallas through two games, and I think that is more evident of Dallas attempting to make him a thing than no. – it, it's like it, – it's really piss-poor game planning to be <sighs> – he was more effective on defense than he was on offense. Like, the offense yeah. is bonus because everybody's getting killed on the perimeter. No, I'll, I'll get back to that in just a second. But, no, that's my point, though, is this isn't – because if you go get, like, a solid quote-unquote center, that's that's the guys that we've been fine against. It's the small ball center types that can be useful as long as they can defend. That's really all and that matters. that's what he's done, though. Because, yeah. No, absolutely. But what I'm saying with that is is – it's not like going and getting a quarter. Like if we go get Rudy Gobert, that everybody would be like, "Oh yeah, we have a legit center." Yada 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 Please yada. Don't go get he Rudy Gobert. Absolutely, yeah, he does absolutely no good for that here. And the other thing with that is, why did we quit screen? I know you've mentioned this earlier. Why did we quit with the bullet screen and getting Curry involved in the pick and roll? Because they never stopped it. Like the <laughs> only thing that stopped it is when the Mavs said, "Nah, we'll quit going at Curry and go at Kevon Looney," which. I've seen it on the internet that some of the Warriors fans were playfully talking about it, that when he guarded Harden, that he just stayed put. And so when Harden turned back to where he was, like he would, like his fourth move, Looney would all just stay in the same spot. And there's some of that with Luka too. There's video of it. It's incredible where it's just like, he's not biting on anything and it's either he's slower in molasses or he's that good at defense. And it's probably a little column A, column B kind of thing. Yeah, no, and it and it works, and it's just I really think what we have today is a big example of the lack of depth throughout the last three months. 
Sure. Like coming back to bite people because I think Maxie's legs are just dead. Like yep. Maxie was terrible. For all the talk about Luca being barbecued chicken in the fourth quarter, Maxie was awful. Maxie was toast. Which Maxie's in a no win situation. Just to be clear, yep. like I'm not I'm not trying to blame it on him, but we just need depth. And for Ian at MMB, Christian Braun could absolutely get minutes on this team. There, uh, this team does not have an issue. Ian's this never team, gonna hear that. <sighs> yeah, this team, this team, we just need one more wing. That that's really all there is to it is we need one more wing, and then yeah. we can do so much else. And kid needs to coach a better second half. And that's all I got. All right, be good, yeah. buddy. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah. Matt's never sad. Also, uh, everyone needs to. We need to find a way to get Matt to the game because Matt the Mavs are something like seventeen and zero when he goes to a home game. All right, now we're gonna fly through some folks. Uh, my buddy Jose, Jose, you're you're awake, aren't you? Yes, sir, I am. <laughs> All right, Jose, I tease Jose because more than once he's fallen asleep waiting for me to call on him. What's up? <laughs> oh man, uh, to to follow up, I I think we need a center. I'm not saying he needs to be the biggest guy. I just think that he needs to have a wingspan and a rim presence, uh, a paint presence so you know he doesn't for have mo bamba is what i'm hearing uh, <laughs> i mean uh bibs has has been saying it and it's just like i don't know may, maybe we need <laughs> bamba i i really don't know how to to solve that but drafting one i mean we've said it a couple of times in our group chat about uh kamagate and maybe Patrick Baldwin, who is not a, a center, but he plays a power forward position, 6'10", has about a seven foot one wingspan, if I'm not mistaken. But there there's ways to, to get around that and just go to say as as a whole what they've been able to do throughout their run, uh, regardless of position, is they've been able to break the the system and the mindset of what basketball is. Well, go look. Go look at their basketball reference. Go just pull up basketball Golden State basketball reference page for their roster, and then sort by height. They have twelve guys between six four and six nine. They, you know, Steph Curry's the shortest guy on the team, six two, one hundred eighty pounds. They built around his weaknesses and do it with just guys that have all kinds of length. I mean. We haven't even seen a couple of them. Like Andre Iguodala, who's, you know, my age, is is not able to play right now. But, you know, he's even able to give them minutes. It's like the, it's the sort of thing that I've been clamoring for the Mavericks to do around Luka, what the Hawks need to do around Trey, where it's just you, you eliminate elements of weakness. And it's just it's challenging because I understand what you mean. You'd like to have a big man that could do this. But the Mavericks should simply just, you know, not as much as I love Boban, great vibes guy. I've heard I've heard from you know pointing around that in 2019 he was a freelance signing from owner Mark Cuban. Um, the Mavericks have had opportunities to sign better players over the years. They just haven't really done it. I mean, it, it, I'm not mad because they're in the Western Conference Finals. So there's an element of this where we're looking at this saying, how can you be mad at the process that they've had because it's in the Western Conference Finals? But they've also you know if they lose this series, say like four one, something like that. I don't know how I'll feel because it's does it does it justify the process of getting here, you know? And and I, I just don't know how to feel. I, I think that the new front office will want to revamp the roster, period. most definitely. And I remember that report about when they released Moses Brown that they said they wanted a, a faster foot uh center. So definitely, I I could see them adding uh, just somebody with with uh, the ability to switch a little bit quicker. But overall, this game I, I was disappointed. <laughs> the the way we were up 19 points and with, with Jalen Brunson having a really good game and then Bullock being able to contribute and Dinwiddie just not able to do shit. It was just frustrating in that aspect because you literally needed maybe just one more guy to hit above 10 points, and we could have had this win. But also, you you know, uh, you've hit it much, pretty much in our group chats as well. It's about Jason Kidd not calling these timeouts a lot sooner and kind of forcing the quote-unquote young guys to figure it out, which mm-hmm. <laughs> doesn't make sense, but... 
I, I just I the thing I hated was less than not calling the timeout and more the inability to take some responsibility for the team that you coach. Take some fucking responsibility. I do this when I fuck up our website because I'm in charge of it. Things happen. You can make mistakes. You can say, okay, you know what? Maybe looking back, I should have called the timeout whenever the Warriors were beating us like we stole something. Not hard. Also, uh, when when they're able to go on a run with, you know, Curry, Clay, and Draymond on the bench, that's just demoralizing. So yes. I'm not mad at anybody who is really just like have their heads hung right now because just seeing those three guys on the bench and them being able to take the lead with Pool and and Looney and and all that. And I, I just want to give a shout out to our opponent because this Warriors team is is good. They're here for a reason, and we're we're seeing our weaknesses get exploited in two games in a row. And I'm not even sure if we could come back down 2-0. Yeah, I, mean, I feel much better. Yeah, I feel much better about being like – I did not I, – I was pull, I was very respectful of Devin Booker right up until I wasn't. I feel much better about this beating than I do getting beat by Devin Booker and Chris Paul's chicanery and getting mad at 15-year-old children and things like that that happened during the series where it's just like – I don't know. There's an element to being beat by a, by a former champion that felt a lot different than the front running sons. So, <laughs> right. and, and then uh, one one last thing, uh, you know, we we got destroyed in the paint. Uh, there's oh my god, it was sixty two to thirty. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're sixty two to our. Wow, that's just unacceptable, and and that's why I clamor for a, a presence around the rim. But overall, disappointing game. Uh, much respect to the Warriors and what they've been able to do to the Mavs in the first two games of the series. Uh, appreciate you, Kirk. You have a good one. You too, buddy. For uh, everybody, Jose, post the the uh, the spaces in the chat. This, uh, Jose hosts the post game spaces where uh, it's a lot more professional than my thing. But here we are. Um, Mr. Savas, how you doing, my friend? Not gonna. Make, I, I inadvertently make you wait till the end of the night. Sometimes I don't do that on purpose. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, it's cool. I'm doing pretty good. Um, hey, real quick, THJ isn't available, right? He's not gonna be available these coming games. I don't think so. They they. So do you remember? Like he has like a metatarsal fracture, I think, and that's like feet, and they're mm. always feet are scary in the sense of it's hard. Like blood flow is very difficult in the feet, which is why like frostbite and stuff is really scary down there because you just can't, you got to be careful. And I don't think, I think they want to avoid surgery because it's at the point now to where he's been out for a real long time. And interestingly enough, he actually got hurt playing the warriors in golden state. I mean, hurt it was like, he took a bad step after a dunk or something. Um, so he, he's, I don't think he's going to come back. No, not even, I don't even think if the Mavs were like to advance to the finals, he would come back. Yeah, plus, you know, coming back from that injury and just throwing you right in there against the Warriors, <laughs> that's kind of asking for trouble. Yeah, exactly. No, and because the, the, the weird thing about all of us, and it's, I'm, I'm not alone in this. If I've, if the Mavs Moneyball staff has thrown this in my face. Tim was terrible this season. Like, there was no yeah. – there was no, he didn't – I don't know if he had a good game. Like, he was, he was so bad. <laughs> yeah, he was awful. Man, yeah, I was begging for the Mavs to trade him. I was so disappointed at the deadline when I saw that we didn't trade him. But yeah, it's hard to hard to trade a guy like that that's injured. That's why. I mean, it might be an off season thing though. So yeah, um, so yeah, the Mavs they just need to come up with other schemes. You know, it seems like all they're doing is throwing up threes. They need to attack the freaking basket. It's really annoying that they just keep throwing these threes up. Like, a lot of these shots aren't – I mean, a lot of them are actually good looks, you know, but they're just not freaking making them. So they just have to go to the basket and see some of those shots, you know, go in. And then that's sure. when they should start, you know, shooting three. You know, this well, whole thing. Well, that's what – that's why I keep bitching about the isolating of Looney because when they were attacking Steph, they got lots of good shots. And instead, they sought out Looney on mismatches. 
the third quarter, if you go look at a lot of the missed shots, you'll NBA.com has some great ability to, for you to see like individual plays. If, and this is, I'm not talking to you, Savas, as much as I am like anyone listening. You can go look at what the Mavericks did in the third quarter. They had all sorts of questionable, like, where as we're watching the game, and I'm not great about like game to game analysis, I usually figure stuff out on the rewatch. But in the moment, it was like, why are we doing this? It's not working. Why have we done it four straight times? <laughs> like, it was really confusing because they were getting the, the shots that weren't going down in the third quarter. Some of them were still okay, but the Warriors were a lot closer on the closeouts. So I know what you mean, though. Like, please attack, attack the basket. Yeah, and, I mean, everything was going well the first half, and then the second half we just weren't hitting those same shots. So, yeah, it was just – it was really annoying. Um, yeah, but also – hold on one second. I'm trying to see – oh, yeah, Josh Green also. Man, I cannot stand those minutes. I mean, every time he shoots it, I I just know he's going to miss it. So it's just really, really frustrating. Well – if you'll allow and, me but to make I know a joke, I, if you'll allow me to make a joke, someone in the uh, my man Logan in the chat just asked someone else to Josh Green smash your wife, and my response would be no, he missed. So, go yeah. ahead, <laughs> um, oh yeah, but also uh, Luca, what's with these passes? You know where he drives and then he just like makes a random no look pass like over his head like pass you know like to the backcourt like you know what passes i'm talking about he's been doing that like these last like two series yeah there was one that was an out of bounds turnover and it's that's the good that's the you know that's the luka Doncic of it all where you take the kind of what the hell was that pass along with the like pass where he uses bullet time to make the pass curve so a little bit of everything no, yeah, I know he makes crazy passes like that, but these these ones are like really really bad. Like where it just looks like he doesn't even have a plan. He just like throws it out there hoping it hits someone. I understand. Um but yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much all I got. Um so yeah, I hope th- I'm pretty confident though that we're going to do well these next two games cuz our role players I know will do are going to actually you know, play good games at home. Uh, it's just whenever they're on the road that it seems like they can hit shots, even though tonight a lot of guys hit shots. But <laughs> That's where I'm are, like, this sucks. The Mavs yeah. were the first team and the Mavs were the first team in playoff history to have three players make five plus threes and then lose the game. <laughs> it's really bad. All right, man. We'll talk soon. All right. All right, man. Mm. All right. Let's keep going to James. Welcome, James. What's up? Oh, hell, hey, can you hear me? I can. Yeah, dang, uh, first-time speaker. Um, well, I, well, we've talked a lot about the game. Uh, you know, well, I don't know what more needs to be said. I was, uh, you know, it's just after the game, and it's just something that you always, I always feel like when we lose. It's just, um, it's just something I always notice. It's just like, man, we're going up against these other teams, and, like, the talent disparity, I just feel like, is always so different. I don't know if it's just a talent disparity or maybe a skill set, you know, difference too. But like you look at like the starting lineup on the Warriors and like four guys can like all of them can put the ball down and dribble and like three of them can create their own shots. I know Clay's been weird, but like they can still create their own shots. Draymond is like, you know, he, he does Draymond stuff. And then you look at our guys and like look, DF, uh, DFS and Bullock, they're really good at what they do, but like they're not guys that can put the ball down and like do their own thing. It's just – you know, Luca and Brunson, I'd say Spencer Dinwiddie, but I have no idea where he's been for the past, I don't know, like two series. Uh, well, so it's always, it's always here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The Warriors have one of the, like, not only do they have one of the best line, like, like teams in the league, they also have one of the most expensive teams. They've worked all this out beautifully. So you, you go through their starting lineup. You have Steph Curry, who was a mid lottery selection. You have Clay Thompson, mid lottery select or late lottery selection, both future Hall of Famers. You're you're excited about that. But then they also have Andrew Wiggins, who was a former, I'm pretty sure I'm right about this, number one overall pick 
You have Otto Porter coming off the bench, former number three overall pick. You have Jonathan Kaminga, who didn't play a minute, who was the number eight overall pick last year, who's really good. And then they've managed to turn Draymond Green, who was picked after Jay Crowder by the Mavericks. Cool job, Mavericks. Uh, second round. And then um, Jordan Poole, who was a late first rounder, I think late first rounder. Um, they, they've they just assembled. Yeah, yeah. Pick 28 out of Michigan. They've just assembled a hell of a team. And the Mavericks, I love this team. I don't want to kill them. Okay. But they, there's Luca, who was picked, you know, three or five, depending on what your kind of opinion on all this is. And then the other first round guy that they have is Reggie Bullock, who was cast off from the Clippers and went to the Knicks. They don't really play dudes like Dwight Powell's second rounder, uh, Dorian Finney Smith, undrafted, Jalen Brunson's second rounder, Maxi Kleba, undrafted. The Mavericks have assembled a team kind of out of, you know, uh, uh, popsicle sticks and, and paste. And because Donnie Nelson was a terrible general manager for 10 years. Yeah, um, I, was, uh, I was speaking with the, the wonderful people in Mavs Discord. And because, like, I'm not saying the series is over. I still believe in our guys. But um, we're always thinking of, like, you know, how can this team improve? And it always sucks because it's like, dang, we're such a bad spot in terms of, you know, assets and money yeah. and all that. Like, dang, like, I, just like the Josh Green pick. Look, I love Josh Green. I love everyone on the team. I'm not going to hate. But, man, replace Josh Green with – I'm not even going to say Desmond Bain. Just like Sadiq Bey or something. And we're in, like, such a better spot than, you know, because, like, that's another thing I noticed is, like, except maybe Damian Lee, I felt like every Warrior player that played men has contributed. <laughs> so good. Yeah, like a real good basketball player. Meanwhile, we're, like, Dwight Powell – is we're just praying he survives. He's the physical manifestation of Maxi's break time, and then we're and then we're playing like <laughs> then we're playing like Frank Nilakina and Josh Green. Who, God, I, I, I saw you tweeted earlier. Is like, or I don't know if it was you. I think it was someone else. Someone like we're trying to play Josh Green and Frank Nilakina, and neither are working. So it's I like mean, we're just trying to survive. And that's it's an old ref. Doing. It's an old reference at this point. But like Josh Green is the basketball version of stop trying to make fetch happen. I just can't. <laughs> He is everybody that tells me this where it's like, I trust people that are like, he's going to be a fine NBA player one day. I want to, I respect that opinion, I but that one day is not going to be with the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah. It's, I, it's tough. But yeah. That's uh, that's my thoughts about the game. Uh, you know, I'm game three. Let's hope, like I said, I'm, it's a tough loss, but you know, I still believe. Let's see. Well, thanks for hanging out and thanks for waiting, James. Appreciate no you. Problem, no problem. Have a good night, man. All right. Uh, Jordan, or I'm sorry, Logan, you're going to come up last because you're always verbose. Sam, what's up? What's up, Kirk? How you doing, man? Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, that that, that effing sucked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, we, it sucks because I've always said, I said it from the beginning of the playoffs. I'm like, listen, just get out the first round. I'll be happy with what happens. Now we got out the second round. We're in the Western Conference Finals. And then I was like, you know what? F it. Let's just win the whole effing thing at this point. You know, I'll just start sure. out my mindset. I just like let's just do it. And that third quarter is is frustrating because the last guy just said it is like, I know we live and we live and die by the three, but like at some point, boy, you got to at least tack the basket a little bit just to slow it down a little bit. Because the thing is, even in that second quarter or third quarter, it's not like they gave. It's not like they scored like fifty points. They only scored twenty five. The Warriors did. So it wasn't like yep. we were getting killed. It's just we just couldn't score. And I think overall, even what makes it more annoying is like Golden State only shot 28 threes, I believe. It made half of them, 14. Yep. So it's like, you know, like they, they made 50% of the threes and they were just killing us in the paint. Meanwhile, we were jacking up threes in the second half and they weren't falling. I mean, I, I get it because, you know, when you're high, you just got to keep shooting it. But like at some point, just do slow down. <laughs> like just slow down and just, you know – Take a chill pill, but hey, that's what the coach is there for. And he just said, "Well, we're just gonna let him fight through it." And I'm like, "Bruh, what lesson? What lesson are you gonna learn if you get knocked out in five? <laughs> you know, like, well, that, that's why I'm so frustrated with him because he said the right thing all season, and then at the moment where it is quite literally a thing he could affect, you know, he's not gotten a technical all season defending the star player. 
for fouls. Now, granted, there's no attempt to do that tonight, but he's never gone to bat for Luca in a game. You know, he's called Luca out on his weight. He's called Luca out on his defense. Both of those things I agree with. But tonight was an opportunity for him to say, you know what? I need to do better. And he did not. And it frustrates me. Yeah, it's 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 annoying. It's it's really frustrating because like 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 the last guy said, I mean, we only have so much talent and we can't waste a game where Luca has forty two, Jalen has thirty, and then Reggie has twenty one. Like Thomas know. in the chat points out that Jason Ginn said this was quote a great experience for a young team again, end quote. Like I'm I'm really glad you brought this up, Thomas. These guys, the average age is twenty seven. They're not young. The next time the Dallas makes a real run at the playoffs, likely the only players in this team are Luka and Brunson. Like yeah. NBA turnover, I think Mavs fans have gotten a little confused because like Dwight Powell and Dorian are just with the team forever. Dwight Powell's like 11th in games played in team history. The next time the Dallas Mavericks makes the Western Conference Finals, because I, you know, it's unlikely to be next year just statistically. I don't know if a lot of these guys are going to be on the team. It's just, it's, it's the way things go. And like kid constantly and the Mavericks constantly like inadvertently, I don't think they're doing this on purpose because he means inexperience, but like this is like gaslighting. When you tell people something that's not true repeatedly, you're lying, whatever you want to call it, whatever. I'm annoyed. Yeah. No, I feel you. I'm, I'm, trust me, I'm annoyed too. It, just one more thing before I get off. Like I love the man. He's earned his money. Like he deserves everything he gets, but Dorian Finney Smith has been ass besides the first half of this game, like the second mm. half, he was horrible. He was just yeah. straight. So I, I, not only has he been ass, he has looked like a deer in headlights. That's it's one thing to play hard and look. And granted, he scored ten points at eight rebounds, I think tonight. But like there was a lot of like, oh no, with Dorian yeah. the past several games. Like he that, was, the, yeah, the like inbounds he, pass, he, the, he, the out of bounds pass at the end of the game. What are you doing? Yeah, the, the lights are they look like they're too big for him. And I mean, I'm not I'm not mad at him for that. You know, hey, he's an undrafted player. He this their first time there. So I get it from one standpoint, but yeah, he's he he hasn't been good. So yeah. <laughs> but I mean that's that's all I got, you know. Hey, let's get home and if we win game three, you know, who knows what happens after that. So we'll just we'll just wait till that happens, I guess. Thanks, Sam. Talk soon. Have a good night. Um, Gordon, how you doing, Gordon? Welcome back. Hey, Kirk. You know, um, I I'm kind of lamenting the fact that we've gotten away from what I think is the most therapeutic like aspect of of you know tonight's pod. Um, we built up a lot of rhythm uh, trashing on Reggie Miller, <laughs> and I feel like we've really gotten away from let's that. you want yeah, let's play the hits. Yes, I mean, like, has there ever been a greater delt? I mean, I'm just assuming like. I mean, you know, I grew up watching, you know, I, I, I was a younger guy during the 90s, but I grew up watching, you know, 90s basketball. And I mean, it's one of my favorite players, you know, and I mean, obviously, like he was a solid player, like into the 2000s and seemed like, you know, he's a really intelligent, you know, guy. And I mean, has there ever been a greater delta between, you know, you know, someone who I assume is, you know, kind of a favorite of, of, of you know, guys who, you know, grew up watching 90s basketball? Um, in early 2000s basketball, like, is there a greater delta between, like, a great player and awful announcer? It's like, there is zero wisdom that, like, comes from this guy. Like, it, it's just, you know, when I, when I'm reading, you know, oh, who's going to, who's, who, who are going to, who's going to be paired, you know, to announce the, 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 you know, the Mavs Golden State series. It's like, Kevin Harlan, yes! Oh, man, this is going to be great. And Reggie Miller, oh, no, this is awful. I forget that those two guys get paired together. Like, it's just awful. Like. Oh, well, thank you so much, Gordon. Or neither. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right. sorry. Well, th- no, well, thank you so much. All right. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. I've had something come up, guys, all of a sudden in a hurry. I am going to have to exit. Um, Man, I hate not getting everybody, but that's uh, Logan, you in particular. You always have great takes. Um, I have to head out. Uh, something's come up. I will um, talk to you guys soon. Everybody be good, and we'll talk to you Sunday. Today's episode is brought to you by Cars.com. 
With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to Cars.com. It's magical.